All right, guys. Uh, here's the Hammerhead Pulse Induction Detector Project. I'm working on the clocking circuitry, generally right down here. And I'm going to go ahead and solder in these two uh, diodes in this test point. So, not a lot of soldering, okay? Just a little taste because. I like it. There's one. and the test point. All right, a little bit much solder on the test point, but that's okay with me. All right, ladies and gents, uh, back to the Hammerhead DIY project, and we're on the clocking circuitry, and I'm just going to show you a few of the test points here in the clocking circuitry. We're going to look at some uh, voltages on some of the ICs. So on the uh, 555 on pin 1, we should have approximately minus 5 volts. And we have minus 4.95. And on IC 11 and IC 12, pin 8, we should have negative 5. So we have minus 4.96 and minus 4.96, okay? And the uh, last one of these is test point one. It's right here, and we should be running just slightly negative, and we are negative 0.554 volts. So that's good. I'll show you a couple of the uh, images on the oscilloscope and we'll go on from there. Okay guys, continuing on with the hammerhead still on the clocking circuitry. So what's, what you see on the screen right now is the uh, main pulse width. Okay, so we have it set. I think you can see down here at the bottom of the screen we have it set and it is just about 50 microseconds and we are running at just over um, one kilohertz okay and you see this uh, little sawtooth pattern up at the top here well that caused me a little bit of consternation but finally I realized that that's being caused by the um, capacitor and resistor combination that is coupling the 555 timer back to our power supply, the LT1054, right? So it's being, it's using an external clock to couple. And I believe if I remove those and just use the internal clock, then this will go away. So just a, a little bit of added excitement there. Um, so as part of this circuit, we have a couple of uh, trimmer pots, uh, R2 and R3, and they're used to control couple different things. So R2 is used to control the frequency of the main pulse and all the pulses derived off that and R3 varies the pulse, pulse width of the main pulse only and that's what we see on TP1. I'll go ahead and 
adjust that and hopefully you can see the result on the screen if I can get onto this trimmer here it's never easy with this little screwdriver okay I think you can see that we're increasing our pulse width there right and I'm gonna go ahead and take it back to about 50 microseconds so that's what that looks like and I'm going to show you a couple of different pulses next okay these pulses that you see on the screen now are the product of IC11 and IC12 we're looking at uh, pin 12 on each of these ICs and IC11 is the first delayed pulse for the main sampling switch okay and IC12 makes an additional delay for the secondary sample pulse okay so let me zoom in here and So the delays in the pulse widths are, are set by a resistor capacitor time constant and the resistor component is, is made up of uh, the potentiometer and a fixed resistor. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust this really quickly here all right so in, in order to uh, show you the uh, the pot changing the pulse width I had to get what free up one of my hands so we're only showing you one of the pulse widths but you can see it's it's uh, changing I'm going to leave it at about 20 microseconds and just for the sake of clarity that is uh, R46 on the board that is varying that pulse width all right so we're gonna get on to the transmit circuitry next thanks